Hey all, Scott here. I originally abandoned this place back when the whole Wii Shop channel closure pre-apocalypse thing started because I had a Wii full of WiiWare games and everybody wanted to kill me. But now since my Wii has gone missing, I can finally relax again considering the fact that I was taken off of the FBI's most wanted and I'm now on the FBI's least wanted. That makes me feel like a fucking loser. I mean, it's whatever. I have nothing to worry about now. Plus, I still have the memories of playing all those WiiWare games. Uh, like that one time I played a bunch of them, like a month before this whole thing happened. Oh god, that was when I played Family Go-Kart Racing. Oh, well this looks playable! No? Family Go-Kart Racing is the family-friendly alternative to Mario Kart. You ever play Mario Kart Wii and say, man, these characters are cool and all, but... Where's Dad? Yep, the whole family's here and they're ready to star in f**k. Family Go-Kart Racing is garbage. <laughs> Yeah, I said it. Steering in this game is a nightmare. The motion controls don't work. Either you don't turn hard enough, or you turn harder than hard, and no matter what, you end up mourning the loss of a family member. Technically, there's 12 tracks in the game, but really there's four track themes with three variants separated by difficulty. Doesn't matter in the end, because each track is damn impossible. Jesus! If only this game was good and sold more, maybe then my dad would make it into Smash Brothers. Outside of Pokemon Fruit Snacks, I haven't really delved into the Pokemon franchise all too much, so why not make my second experience in the series be Pokemon Rumble? The demo version, that is. This, alongside My Pokemon Ranch, were the only two Pokemon titles released on WiiWare. My Pokemon Ranch was the leading cause of disgusting logo syndrome, and one of those simulation titles that WiiWare was flooded with. You know, you sit there, can slightly interact with the animals, maybe move around, that's about it. Pokemon Rumble is a different story though, it's all about mashing that 2 button and not much else. You control toy versions of Pokemon, which really means here's a canonical reason as to why these models look so bad. You just keep moving forward, pummel other Pokemon, face a boss, pummel them, move on to the next area, and then duke it out in the Battle Royale. I mean, this is just a demo, but from what I've played, Pokemon Rumble is just too simplistic and repetitive for my liking. They made four of them. I never downloaded this initially, mainly because do I look like a Pokemon Rumble downloader to you? I also never downloaded my Pokemon Ranch. I mean, I already had enough WiiWare simulation games. Speaking of which... <laughs> yeah, I'm a zoo guy now. My zoo is all about complete freedom. It's your zoo, do whatever you want, including having only three exhibits with three of one animal type in each. We have it all. We're really hitting it out of the park with all the bear fans out there. We got this elephant frying in the kids' room, and of course you can't forget the zebras. You can name your animals. That's my zoo for you. A big part of the game is breeding your animals, but all that gets you is another animal. I can add three bears to the bear exhibit right off the bat. Why would I want to worry about child bears? My zoo is a little too just watching 3D models of animals walk around -y for me to really get into it. But hey, if you want to name a zebra Fallout 76, my zoo fully supports that feature. Bubble Bobble is an undisputed classic from the arcades, NES, Game Boy, Master System, Commodore 64. Shove your hand between the couch cushions, you'll find a different version of Bubble Bobble. Why not add to the list with a remake of the original on WiiWare, Bubble Bobble Plus. Now with brand new visuals, oh god. Bubble Bobble Plus is an enhanced remake in the sense that it's fundamentally Bubble Bobble Plus. It has everything the original had, plus more content. Four player multiplayer, even two level packs you could buy. Sure, the graphics are kinda and disgusting. It just looks so cheap. I'd really prefer if they just went with sprite art or a 2D hand-drawn look. Disregarding that, this is just straight up bubble bobble. The NES version was on the Wii Shop channel for 500 Wii points, with Plus going for only 600. That's only a dollar extra for quite a bit more content added. It's nothing groundbreaking, but Bubble Bobble Plus is just more bubble bobble. That's all right in my book. Xmas puzzle shows me what Christmas is really all about. Oh yeah, that happened. I find it cheap how they show you a blurry version of the full image behind everything, that just makes things too easy. In the end though, Xmas Puzzle delivers the religion puzzle based goods and then some. Not only do you get Xmas Puzzle, but more Xmas Puzzle. Somebody grab a plural form. And Yet It Moves was one of the most unique releases on WiiWare. It started life out on PC and eventually made its way onto the platform and oh, oh it's so good. A simple platformer where you have to rotate the world around you to progress, and it really makes you rethink everything about the world you're in. What can be a viable platform to use, how to use the train to your advantage, everything. You gotta be careful though, because you do die if you fall from a great enough height. Now this is just the demo, I missed out on the game initially, but I always heard great things about it. The thing that mega blows though is that the WiiWare version was the only console port of the game ever released. It's only available on computers, and it made its way to iOS under the name Yet It Moves, but I believe it's no longer available. Come on guys, get this baby on modern platforms. 
Snowpack Park, made by the fine people at Skip, who made this, which led to this. This is a- oh, Jesus, again? This is another simulation game for WiiWare, just like my Pokemon Ranch, and my zoo, and my aquarium, and my little baby, and Ant Nation, and my dolphin. Only now I truly realized how many of these games flooded WiiWare, and they all share a common problem. There's nothing to them. Most of these games are basically just watching an animal do something and you can interact with it in like two ways that don't matter at all. Like, oh, you can pet the animal and you can clean up after them and that's it. Now to be fair here, Snowpack Park is much more gamey than a lot of the other simulation games, but it isn't all too remarkable. You raise penguins, you fish for food, you find more penguins, you raise penguins, you fish for food. Now the bulk of the entertainment value you can derive from these games really depends on how much you're willing to let your imagination go wild with these things and make up a lot of the fun yourself. It should also be noted that I can tell these games are supposed to be bite-sized experiences, played for like five minutes a day. You download them so they're always on your system, so after you're finished playing another game, hey, why not check in on the penguins? The problem to me is that all these sim games I've looked at just don't have enough to them. They give you like two things to truly mess around with, and that's it. I need more customization, I need more things to do to get me involved, and these games just don't do that. There you go, let that be a lesson to all you WiiWare developers out there. Paint splash for everybody who wants to draw but doesn't have paper. Nothing makes me feel like I'm dying more than trying to draw perfectly with a Wii Remote. We have all these- Alright, either somebody's smoking gasoline cigarettes or people are retaliating, and for good reason. In a few short weeks, you aren't gonna be able to download Paint Splash anymore. Fuck saying that hurt! Time to get diagnosed with dart rage. Shit, they got Vince Valenti to program this? From the minds behind Pong Toss Pro comes dart rage. It's like beer pong minus beer pong, now with darts. Now this is more like it. This must have been the Pong Toss Pro developer's true passion project. That doesn't mean it's absolutely fantastic. It's not bad, but it's not great either. It's just right. Art of Balance was always one of WiiWare's heavy hitters. I didn't personally play it when it was relevant, but it was always a title brought up when talking about WiiWare. In short, it's a physics puzzle all about stacking shapes so they don't topple over after a short period of time. It's simple, it's easy to understand, and it's really quite a blast. Art of Balance was developed by Shinin Multimedia, an indie team from Germany responsible for the fast racing games. So the same people who made this, made this. That f***ing terrifies me. Remember TV show King? Were you dying to see how the story concluded? TV Show King 2 is basically the developers of TV Show King saying, wait a sec, we can do better. It's fundamentally an expanded version of the first game, with even more options like having a cactus for a podium and being able to create your own questions and submit them online for Gameloft to review and possibly give to other players. I wish you could just make your own questions and use them in local play though, I, I would love that. Online has been added, but the tried and true TV Show King formula is still here. If there's anybody who screams the author of Marley me, it's Walter Cronkite. War. It's cool, right? Well, Water Warfare gives us all the joy of war, plus aquatics as well. So oh, this is cute. It's a first-person shooter for the rest of us. And by God, it's hard to land a hit on opponents. However, it does function well and stands out from the rest of the crowd on WiiWare. We really never saw a lot of full-on first-person shooters there. So hey, if you don't want your kids to play Doom, hand them Water Warfare. They'll fucking hate you, but you'll actually be parenting. and the WiiWare service has been validated. Lead the Meerkats is a son of a bitch! Yes, the return of the WiiWare sim game with like three options to mess with and nothing more. What color do I like? Oh, fuck. You know all those times you've gone to the zoo, looked at the Meerkats and went, if only. Lead the Meerkats proves we all weren't missing out on much. The Meerkat simulation genre needs a killer app, and this isn't it. After the family go-kart racing scandal, I really didn't want to stir up even more controversy, but I have to say this. Too fast for gnomes fucking reeks. It's in the auto running gnome genre, and it's definitely one of the best auto running gnome games I've played in recent memory, but it's completely ruined by this. How are you supposed to differentiate what's part of the background and what's an obstacle? I'm just a gnome, you expect me to understand the difference between background art and obstacles when there's next to nothing that tells you which is one and which is the other? Well, that was a solid slate of WiiWare games. Uh, let's see how many I didn't care about. Damn it. That's not a great sign because we're really scraping the bottom of the barrel of WiiWare games to look at. But it's fine, because I forgot what I was gonna say there. It was stupid. Nothing is fine. The world is going to end. Wii Shop Channel's demise is inevitable. But at least I don't have to worry about getting brutally killed since I don't have my Wii anymore. I can't live without Leave the Meerkats, I gotta get it back! 